Welcome back, fishing friends, to another adventure. All right. We're here at the World War Worldwide Headquarters, and I'm going to go over a couple things with you today. And it's a little bit, you know, different video, but sometimes I like to share stuff that may be helpful or some things that I've been working on. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and for supporting the channel. And for everyone, you know, I couldn't do this without your support. And uh, the channel is growing. I'm real excited about that. And I'm real excited about 2022 and all the fishing adventures that I'm going to be participating in. Okay, so for breakfast, I usually have this little scoop of this. It's a little meal replacement protein drink. And so I've got a mixer cup. I put that in. But the thing that drives me nuts is when I first get this, that scoop, I don't know if you can see it, that thing is always buried down in there, and it's just, I hate having to dig down in there. So I made my own scoop, and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Okay, so the thing is, I've been working hard at, you know, getting some of this lard off, and it's coming off. <laughs> I used to be right about 215, then down to 200, and I just, anyway, so I've gone through that whole story before, but I'm getting back there. But protein was a big deal for me. Now, you can't overload on protein because it can, you know, affect the kidneys, but for once in the morning, you know, for, meal, for like a meal replacement shake, that's perfect. Now, I'm a no-caffeiner, so I don't um, touch any caffeine. I mean, clear back to like 1996. I can get up, I can go, I don't have any weird cycles, I sleep great, and I just, uh, I don't ever have to worry about dealing with any caffeine. So sometimes when I watch these bushcraft channels and these guys are firing up coffee in the morning, I'm just like, thank God I don't ever have to worry about any of that. Or people that want to go on a fishing trip and they can't get their day started unless they're drinking coffee or whatever, never have to worry about that. But on the, there is some tea that I'll drink that's caffeine-free, not decaf, because even decaf can get down to even have like 2% uh, caffeine in there. I mean, just nothing. There are some teas out there that, you know, I can get. And I've drank some of those before on cold mornings, like when I was in Amarillo. But um, when I was teaching school there, that a lot of people don't realize that they actually get decent snows there and... We had a stretch once where we were like 9 below, 10 below, and 11 below in a three-night period. So it was kind of chaotic. Now, the thing is with this protein, you know, some people do it three times a day. I just do it in the morning. And uh, like I was saying, that it drives me nuts that that scoop gets buried in there. So what I did was is I carved my own little spoon here. And it's small, and but that's exactly how I want it to be. It's deep enough, and I can get the right amount of scoop. Now, I'm not going to break down the exact measurements of what the scoop is, but it works perfect for this. Now, this particular brand right here, Isolate, I don't, you know, they're not, they don't sponsor anything for me or anything like that. It's just the one that I, that I work, found that works well for me, and I've tried a bunch of them. Everything from casing to, you know, all these different ones but I get this at GNC and they have one that's a potassium free one which you know you don't want to have too much potassium because it can affect the heart this one's got a little bit but it just works for me but anyway so I carve this with the climber this Victorinox Swiss Army Knife climber mainly this blade right here and I use the longer blade a couple times this one but the block of wood was much bigger so I did have to make a couple of cuts with my Ranger grip 78 where I used the saw blade just to get you know to just to trim it down a little more than the rest of, oops I'm holding it up too high I did trim it the saw it down a little bit more but then the rest of it I trimmed with this and I just kept at it, and in here, with that tip, I just kept, you know, twisting it and carving it, twisting it and carving it. And then I got it how I wanted it to, to the shape I wanted. And then I went after it with sandpaper, and this thing is super smooth. I don't have a name for it, really. I just call it my scooper. 
But the one thing I am going to do is I'm going to treat it with uh, this linseed oil. And I really like using that. I've got a friend of mine that, get this, he uses olive oil, which I've never heard of. So what I did is I just get a Q-tip, dip it in there, and then I just go over it. And it can darken the, the wood a little bit, and that doesn't bother me a bit. Sometimes I wear gloves for this, sometimes I don't, it just depends. But the wood really soaks this up. And if I need to apply a little bit more, I just stick it down in there. And this is what I use on the handles of my bushcraft knives. The Kephart knife that I got, and then the that Bushlore Mini Condor that I showed you the other day that I made the turned into a neck knife I didn't use any cool cordage or anything it's just a leather strap there but see there it's kind of you know getting a little it's not going on as smooth so that lets me know I need to dip it in here again And like I always say, you know, here there's, I don't do anything scientific here. <laughs> Everything is just casual as can be. All right, so we got that. Let me get this up here. I don't know if I've been holding that up there. I've been trying to look at it. And then my hand, my hands drop, and then it kind of gets out of view. Okay, I'm going to hold it down here at this end. I don't mind touching the linseed oil. Like I was saying, sometimes I, I wear gloves, but sometimes I don't. Usually one Q-tip, and you can alternate ends if you want. There are just a few imperfections in there, and uh, I can always go back and resand it if I want, but this thing is super smooth. Always got to check the corners. And no, by no means am I a professional carver, <laughs> a whittler most likely, or is more accurate, but I have used those bushcraft knives to make um, toggles and stakes, tent stakes. Alright, so there we go. Let me push this cap down on the linseed oil. Hey, I'm pretty impressed. I only had to use one, uh, one Q-tip for that. So then I'll just kind of set it down on this rag right here, let it dry, and it should be alright. Even where I put my fingers, if I need to go back over it, <clears throat> excuse me, I can do that. But that's pretty cool. I've never really carved any kind of uh, spoons or scoopers or anything. It's probably easier to do a spoon compared to the depth that I had to do for this thing. But that's pretty cool. If you guys don't own any of these Victorinoff, Victoria Knox Swiss Army Knives. Pick some up. I've done some reviews on them. Everyone from the little bitty classic one to this one. And they've got so many. Sometimes I think I'm going to start collecting them. And, but I already have a big enough collection with fishing lures and stuff. But I like to take this one out with me in, in my tackle box or the, the other Ranger Grip that I've got. It's a little bit bigger. And, you know, there's always a use for these. But I got to tell you. So this guy, I carved it, but I did this while I was fishing. So while I was waiting, you know, the, if I was using like night crawlers or whatever, and I was up in the, you know, the different places I was out fishing, I would just carve on this and work on it or sand it. Now, if I'm actively casting, you know, and doing that kind of stuff, 
obviously I'm not working on this, but there were times where, and you guys know that from fishing, there are times where you're just kind of sitting around waiting, or if you're doing like a drop shot kind of a thing and you're monitoring the line or whatever, or like in my last video we were out catfishing and I was just kind of watching stuff. But anyway, it's a good time to just to kind of carve. So it's something that, um, you know, you should try. And it doesn't have to be a, a Swiss Army knife. There's all kinds of knives you can carve with. I think the first time I really started whittling was with a buck knife when I was maybe 6th, 7th grade. One that my dad got me. Or must have, yeah, probably 6th grade, 7th grade. And I was just whittling carve on stuff. But, you know, I'm not a pro. I mean, some of these people are, you know, carving out furniture and all kinds of stuff with these knives. But, um... I do sharpen this, you know, once I'm done with it, but um, that's pretty much it, guys. I was just going to give you a quick little rundown of what I had done and made for this little protein deal and my new little scooper, so that's pretty much it. Okay, some uh, I'm going to try to do, there's a new pond I want to explore. I think I'm going to be able to do it this weekend if the weather is, is nice. Up in one of the wildlife refuge, there's a new pond that I, it's not really new, it's been there for a long time, but for me it'll be new, that I've never been to before and I've got to hike again. And so that's where I was talking about maybe using, um, you know, take the Cryptek, but I also want to start making some videos with like a haversack set up, kind of a lighter option and kind of go through that and something I'll explore and test out now that I can get ready for trout fishing when I head up to, to Iowa because some of those places I got to squeeze into and get into I mean there's just you know just junk everywhere tall grass branches this that and the other and uh, when that thing is just you know getting hung up on stuff it's kind of a you know a little bit of a pain and maybe a little haversack hanging down you know may make things a little bit better I've never liked haversacks before because I don't you know, like having it hanging off that one side, but I can get used to, uh, if I can get used to it and, you know, then might change my mind or it could be a complete bust, but I'm going to try some of that out. So we, that may be something I try this weekend. It's a nice pond. It's got some, you know, the typical stuff you're going to have in there, bass. Uh, there are going to be some gar, catfish, lots of crappie, sunfish, white bass. I don't think there's any yellow bass in there. So I'm going to be fishing for that kind of stuff. It may be prime whopper plopper territory. Now I know in the winter time things are a little bit iffy, but this this isn't there's part of it's deep, but then there's some of the shallows. And you know a bass whether lethargic or not for the winter is going to have a tough time not wanting to hit that whopper plopper cruising through. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks for hanging around. Bye-bye.